Good morning, everybody. Victor here, and welcome back to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. In the last episode, we were inshore fishing with our good friends from High Tide Charters. Oh, my God! Rooster, 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 rooster! <laughs> Look at that, baby! That's a rooster! Yes, sir. Thank you! We switched gears and headed offshore in search of the many species found off the Mexican coast. Good morning, everybody. Victor here. So we are in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and uh, we stayed at a beautiful place called the Hacienda Maria Elena, run by my good friend Jamie back there. We are about 50 miles offshore today, and we're going to do a lot of trolling. And we're trolling for some big fish today. I'm talking about striped marlin, blue marlin, cubera snapper. This very boat, a couple years ago, I caught my biggest ever cubera snapper doing the exact same thing we're going to be doing today. So we got Captain Jamie behind the wheel and his mate Juan. We're in a dangerous place here. We need to be serious. There can be big fish and we need to be ready. We keep looking and we're gonna find something pretty interesting, I'm sure. I love Jamie's sayings. When you say so when you say something like we're in a dangerous place, I think like we're in the ghetto, but for Jamie, it means something completely different. Juan is putting out the spread right now, and we got a couple different things. They actually just killed a fresh goggle-eye, and it's crazy because back home, we don't, no one really trolls goggle-eye. Maybe because we just don't have a lot of uh, marlin that would eat them, but that's one of Jamie's favorite baits. He actually splits it right down the middle because he says it gives it better action. So he's got a goggle-eye rigged up there, another one. And then, you know, just standard big trolling skirts. This lure kind of goes in and out of the water and it'll go sideways. So just like the game of cat and mouse, a marlin sees that from behind and he's real curious because he sees that lure just doing all different things. So we just got to El Banco. We're pretty far, it's been a long run, but as soon as we got here, tuna's jumping all over, a bunch of birds working. We got a couple of bites in the back, nothing too serious yet, but I have a great feeling about today. Two! Double on whatever that is. Triple! Triple! Four! You guys, we just quadrupled or tripled up on fish. Don't say this, Jamie. <laughs> Most probably not Jack Cravel. Most probably not. Huh? Well, that was exciting. That'll get your blood pumping, huh? Jamie yeah. says he thinks they're Jack Cravel, but we'll see. Big old Jack Cravels. So we've pretty much started every single day catching these guys. Seems like they're all over Mexico, inshore, offshore, jacks everywhere. Mmm, -hmm. mm, nice tuna. Yeah, Mexican tuna. You got some triple. Now hold them. Yeah. So crazy how they have these stripes. We don't have the stripes on our Jack Ravel at home. Yeah, you see the stripes on him? He's got bars. Mine was the biggest. Yours was the biggest and the furthest out too. Still out here trolling, waiting on a bite. One thing I love about Mexico and just traveling, exploring different fisheries is sites like that. The Mexican coastline in the background, these towering mountains, we don't have that back home in Florida. It really makes you appreciate the traveling aspect. It's You could easily lose sight of just fish, 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 but taking a second to just take that in really is special, especially when you're rocking the Waterland Coast sunglasses. So about six months ago, I brought this company on as a sponsor on the channel. I rock the Millican Frame sunglasses with the blue lenses. You guys can actually save 15% off. Use my code Landshark. I'll have them linked below or you can find them at waterlinko.com. I love supporting the companies that support me. So if you guys are in the market for some sunglasses, check them out. Link below. If you guys have never fished in the Pacific Ocean, the ocean changes so much. Like back in the Atlantic, we don't really have a big swell. We have a swell kind of in the winter time over here. 
no matter how calm it is, even if there's no wind, there's always like a three foot swell with like a seven or eight second period. It's very interesting. And we've gone through like three different zones today where it'll be flat calm, then you got a big swell, then you got a medium sized swell. It's cool to experience as a fisherman when you go to different places, how the ocean just changes, the water colors, you see all the like the plankton in the water and it's just so different from what we're used to. That one was close to the bottom. First fish for uh, Vic Jiggin. I have watched Brooke catch two of the cutest little grouper right now. They're like, I don't know, they're like in the mixer, mix of a gag and a black grouper had a baby. They're super brown. I was jigging right on the bottom here. No really action on the top through the popper a little bit. Drop down the jig. Let's see what we got. We're only jigging in like a hundred feet of water too, so we're not very deep. Whatever it is, is not fighting at all. No. Did your grouper not fight? I mean a little bit when I first saw it. This... Wow, another one. Of course, Brooke catches them twice as big as me, as usual. I mean, someone has to. Aw, <laughs> oh, yours is cute. <laughs> Thanks, Brooke. I'm gonna let this guy go, but check it out. Jamie doesn't know what these are, and there really is not much information online um, when it comes to like the Mexican fishery it looks like but check that out it looks like some type of grouper species but in the Pacific they have a lot of rockfish maybe it's some type of rockfish very dark these fish are so docile he's barely fought he's barely doing anything in my hand and since he's hooked so good interesting the spot we were at El Banco had a lot of cold water so that's not good for the pelagic fish. There was no bonitas around to troll. I told you guys we wanted to get big baits, but they were just not around, no activity. Whenever I travel to different locations, there's always this presumption that the fishing is gonna be good no matter what. But every fisherman knows that couldn't be further from the truth. There's always bad days no matter where you are in the world. Sometimes there's even bad weeks. Jamie normally does really well with the snapper and grouper around all these rock outcroppings, but unfortunately, a big push of cold green water came in the week before and it kind of shut down the bite for us. But it's days like this that really make me appreciate the beauty around me. I never knew sea lions went this far down the Pacific coast, but they must have been vacationing just like us. We spent the rest of the day fishing all these rock structures, headed back to the lodge, ready to do it all again tomorrow. Check it out guys, we're back out here again, but this time we're on one of Jamie's really good friends, Gabriel's boat. He's got a little bit of a bigger panga. So we've been chasing a marlin for a couple days now. And marlin are not one of those fish where you come out of here and you're guaranteed. It is kind of like a once in a lifetime thing. And Jamie told us, you know, like the more we gamble, you know, the, the higher the likelihood we hook one, but it's not guaranteed. You know, he has days where he catches four or five, then you can go a week without getting a bite. They are the apex predator, one of the apex predators here, and it's a fish you definitely have to earn. So we're back out here. We're trying something a little different. We came in much shallower. Gabriel says that he had some good luck last week in shallower than where we've been fishing way offshore. There's a temperature change right here. So we're basically just gonna keep doing what we've been doing, putting out a spread, goggle eyes, the trolling lures. We're gonna have some pitch baits ready. Basically, just trying to lure a marlin into our spread, hopefully get him in the boat. Fingers crossed we're gonna get one today. As soon as I picked it up, he wasn't taking it anymore. He hit it one time and that was it. Marlin hit this long, long goggle eye. We all saw way back there something slashed at it. 
looked like it was a billfish, but as soon as I went to pick up the rod, it was just slack. Like the, whatever striked it was not interested in coming back for it. Billfish. Billfish? Mmm. How do you know it's a billfish? Yeah, what, what? The maki, they got, uh -huh. they got teeth. Uh -huh. Billfish, they, they mark it out. So I just swallowed it. It. it was the lucky song. We played our lucky song. Ella baila sola. sola. Ella baila sola. Shout out to Peso Pluma. <laughs> <laughs> this bait I gotta make sure it doesn't get tangled so you gotta play musical baits and try to weave in and out of all of them this one's gonna go right down the middle in between all of them you know what marlin fishing is like this is it right here staring at rod tips and staring at your baits you're all calm and then all of a sudden mr. marlin comes by gets well, your heart racing so if you sit here and watch you'll probably see it happen that's what's the cool thing about trolling these baits up on the surface is it's a very visual thing. No. Exploded? That's sad, huh? Oh, there's something on it. What was that? What was it? No, not Mahi Mahi. It's a triple sail. What? No Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh! That is so cool, guys! A triple tail ate the stick bait! And I think it was the biggest one that ate it, too. It is a big one, man. Oh my gosh! How cool is that, guys? A triple tail on this buoy just floating. I've never seen nobody cut a triple tail on the stick He was hungry and aggressive, Jamie. Wow! There we go in the belly. Oh my gosh, a stud triple tail on a stick bait. That is insane. We have these in Florida. I know that they catch them in Mexico, um, but I did not know that they would eat a stick bait. This guy was so hungry. We found this floating structure just out here. I threw this little orange lure at it, and I thought it was a jack or something because I've never seen triple tail so aggressive. This guy came out of nowhere and just demolished it. And luckily, it was the biggest one out of the group. These are one of the best eating fish, pelagic floaters, I call them. So they will usually float with things. They'll turn sideways on their back and they'll ambush it. So if a little shrimp or a little bait fish swims by, they'll kind of ambush it. They're not really built for speed. They're kind of just stealthy. The camouflage, they turn a bunch of different colors, yellow, orange, brown, depending on their environment. And um, delicious. When I say white, white, flaky meat, this is it right here. That one was barely hooked. That's why I wanted to gaff him. It wasn't in there. Found some cleaner water. We've been dealing with this cold green water that Jamie says he doesn't really like all week. Things are coming together. I think this fish is probably over 30 pounds. Just a monster Mexican mahi. They just use that big, broad body. They get in the current and he just wants to just keep pulling. Nothing gets your heart racing than seeing a fish come into the spread and then jumping like that. That's the cool thing about when you're fishing for marlin and mahi is they put on such an acrobatic show. That's what I love about dolphin. That is so sick. <laughs> he wants to be on video, huh? Like he's gonna do it again, Dennis. That is awesome.
You gotta love it when a fish puts on a show for you. Sometimes you catch dolphin, they don't jump at all. This one did it perfectly right behind the boat. I'm gonna back off the drag just a little bit because I don't want that head, that hook to pull out of this fish right here. When he gets to the boat, he's probably gonna go ballistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah buddy, look at that fish, guys! <laughs> <laughs> guys see we put them in the fish box these fish have been known they're so strong and powerful they'll break fiberglass they'll break coolers they'll break hatches just for our safety and his safety we put them in the fish box for now my number one favorite thing about this fish when you catch them you don't know if they're gonna be yellow green blue purple these fish undergo so many different color transformations the prettiest pelagic fish you can catch not only are they delicious but they are a sight to see when we gaffed this thing, it was a bright yellow and dark green. And now he just turned into like an aqua blue. He's got all this, it, it re really looks like someone splattered paint on him. That's how beautiful he looks. He's got this blue pectoral fin, gorgeous fish. And look at this, look at that. That is amazing. <laughs> you guys see what I talk about that color change? You see his tail? That's what it looked like when we first caught him, and he's slowly transitioning colors. It almost looks like he's turning back to green. This really is a color change in fish. Monster Mexican Mahi Mahi. Book a trip with high tides fishing. You won't regret it. Jamie and his crew, outstanding people, the lodge, the food, fish of a lifetime like this. I love Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and I love coming here and sharing these experiences with Brookie and Dennis. Gabriel and Jamie it just warms my heart so you guys find him linked in the description box below I know Gabriel's itching he's got he's holding the goggle eye he wants to get baits back out <laughs> he wants to get baits back out so we're gonna put this guy in the cooler let's fillet him up starting right here by the tail and basically just work up I really for all pelagic fish dolphin tuna wahoo um, kingfish, basically anything with really thin skin, I really like to work from the tail to the head on that first cut. I find you make the least amount of mistakes. Got to break through the pin bones of the mahi. Once I get to the backbone, I'm just going to free up this meat. Now I'm going to kind of go right here on the top of his backbone and free up the meat right on top of it. You gotta really point the tip of your knife down on the other side of it where you're gonna miss a ton of meat. And then when I get to the gut cavity, don't go on the gut cavity. So I kind of glided right over those ribs. Dolphins, since they grow so fast, they have one of the nastiest gut cavities and they're almost always full. There's always, almost always something in their stomach because these fish grow so dang fast look at that look at that slab of mahi mahi right there big old mexican dolphin we're gonna bring this back to the lodge i know the chefs there are gonna whip it up make something delicious we'll see you guys there What attracted me at first to move to Puerto Vallarta, at first, not even fishing, the beauty of the place, just the mountain uh, dropping in the ocean, the bay, I fell in love literally. And then I discovered fishing through charters actually, which is what I'm doing right now, as you know. When I discovered that we had all the species here, marlin, tuna, cuberas, mahis, all kinds of snappers, it was just, uh, it felt, just right to move here it was an easy move for me around here we have a bit of everything obviously everything that's on the water so that's snorkeling surfing whale watching and off the outside of the water zip lines nightlife there's literally everything a big city would have it has also that a very cool uh ocean side vibe okay guys back at the hacienda and tonight for dinner we got a little mahi as well as the grouper that we caught from the other day, but I'm gonna let Karen, 
the chef here, take it away, and Jamie's gonna translate between us so we can kind of figure out what's going on with the fish, but I'm very excited to try it because we've had Karen's cooking all week and she is amazing, an amazing chef. I see tequila, I'm happy. I yeah. don't care what it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. Yeah, she's gonna use tequila uh, after wise, like to make fire. How do you call that process? Flambo, I think, uh -huh. flambo. So that's why she's gonna use the tequila and she's gonna use uh, adobo okay. as a sauce, red adobo. Okay. So it sounds like she's gonna use like the tequila maybe to deglaze the pan with. Um, you know how you use alcohol, you use wine or beer at the very, very end to get it flamed, to caramelize those sugars and that alcohol. And yeah, so right now, I just saw her, she put a little salt and pepper, oil on the grouper or on the mahi that is right there. She's got a nice hot pan, just went in with some oil, some onions and garlic. Tequila time, huh? Uh, uh, Como se dice in Espanol, like the method of what she did? Flambia. Flambia. So she just poured in a bunch of that tequila, pan searing the fish, and that tequila is going to reduce and it's going to turn sweet when you subject alcohol to a lot of heat, you're burning off that alcohol and what you're gonna be left with is this really rich, sweet, not that bitter taste you get from alcohol, but just this sweet flavor and a, a liquid to cook with the fish. Got some nice color on the mahi. Oh, mantequilla. You gotta finish off with some butter, put some fat in there. All right, and there's the reveal of the mahi. So she's cooking mahi in one pan and we're gonna do the grouper next garlic and onion for the grouper this time. Okay, once again, she's going in with the grouper. Gonna sear it a little bit, some lime juice. So now she's got a, a pot of adobo. She's just gonna reheat. You got cinnamon, naranja, so orange juice, uh, guajillo chili, uh, anijo, uh, ajote chili, achote, achote. Is there a tomato in there too? No, tiene jitomate. Okay, and then it's also a tomato base. Oh, more than 200 things. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Broccoli, carrot, some cauliflower in there. Look at that flaky, delicious grouper right there. Sanaoria. Oh man, look at that adobo. That silky smooth tomato sauce. Oh yeah. As soon as she poured that on the fish, I get just like smacked in the face with all that chili and cinnamon. And, oh, even the, the tortilla finish and the balsamic glaze. <laughs> okay, so Karen and everyone else at the lodge works extremely hard and it shows. She's so passionate about food. Um, I mean, just absolute beauty, masterpiece of a dish right there. And yeah, I mean, you can't ask for more. You fish all day, you come home to a meal like this. I mean, this is a priceless, priceless place to stay. I got a tortilla mountain in the middle of my soup. My, let's see. When we mm. got home today, the first thing that you smelled when you walk in the doors was this. Now that I have it in front of me, I was like, oh my God, it smells so good in here. And this was the smell. This is incredible. It tastes like they took corn and tomatoes and kind of blended it together and roasted it. You can see like the little bits of char in there. It is so good. Just the broth of this is amazing. This is before we even have dinner. I'm pretty sure 
what I have on my plate is grouper. You can tell by the flakes are different than what I'm usually used to with mahi. And it's very, very delicious. Oh, Enrique, gracias. Ooh, look at this. Not only do we have fish, so I can tell you right now, that looks like the mahi, and that looks like the grouper, mm -hmm. right? And then chili relanos? Relleno. Relleno? Chili relleno. Um, she's, she, Karen made like a stuffed chili. It's got some type of sauce on it. It looks like some type of cream stuffed with cheese. And what else is in there? I think that's it. That's it. That's it? Cheese? Yeah. It looks amazing. It's always nice to try a new species you've never had before. Good flake on it. I like the flavor of the mahi more, but the flake of the grouper, if that makes sense. The grouper's got this like real big succulent flake, but I feel like the mahi has more fat content. But both delicious. And the best part about this dish is the fact that I didn't have to cook anything. Imagine you wake up, you get to fish all day with Jamie and the crew, you see the beautiful Mexican coastline, you catch all these fish, you come home, you don't have to clean, you don't have to cook, you don't gotta do nothing but enjoy a nice dinner, a glass of wine, salute to you guys, salute to everyone else, and that's it. You don't have to worry about a thing. You just live carefree, and that's the most magical thing about this place. Maximum effort, as always. Take advantage of all the opportunity we could. And it wasn't as planned, but we made something happen. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, we had a lot of green, cold water that moved in, but we're gonna be back here in October. Jamie says that the marlin are really thick in October. Tunas, cabarrus pretty much everything so we're gonna be back i want to thank you guys so much for watching and if you're interested in a trip like this i'm gonna have all of jamie and olga's stuff linked in the description box below till the next one see ya we are the only all-inclusive fishing lodge in puerto vallarta which i think is is pretty cool also what i love about this place is we can really customize your package you want to fish for the entire time you're here, you can fish the entire time. You want to go surfing a day or two, you want to come and fish only one day and rest. We can, we can uh, accommodate you. And during the entire week, we're with you. We have a chef here the entire time. We're going to have waiters here the entire time, cleaning ladies. You have nothing to do. We take care of everything and we organize whatever you need. We can accommodate a lot of people for dinner, actually. We have uh, tables outside, big tables inside, single tables for couples. So that's also uh, pretty cool, I think. And off the, outside of the water, zip lines, nightlife. There's literally everything a big city would have. It has also that, a very cool uh, ocean side vibe. So to wrap it up, guys, uh, we are here in Puerto Vallarta. You can easily reach us on the Instagram, Facebook, send us an email. We'll quickly answer your question and let's go fishing. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Till the next one, see ya.